I've always been coming to Cornwall since I was a baby, so yeah. I've always loved it. And then in 1980, I got a job down here for Westwood Television. So I bought my first house and lived down here properly for five years. And then life took me off up to London and things. And, um, and then about 20 years ago, when Phil and I first met, I brought him on holiday with my three children and put him in a caravan and he could stand that. And then the next year we came down married with our own daughter. So the four of us, six of us all together, four children, living in a caravan for the next 10 years on and off, you know. I love Cornwall for everything and I, I can't even put my finger exactly on it, but when I was like two and uh, we'd arrive and jump out of the car, fall out of the car after like a 24 hour trip or something, no motorways. and. Um, I'd be let out of the car while all the adults were packing into the little cottage that we used to rent. Um, I'd be down on the beach and feel that cold sand on my feet after a warm day and you can smell the sea and that magic of tomorrow the sun's out and I'm going to be on this beach. It's just, and I still have that feeling, the smell of it. As soon as we cross the border, I open the car of the window, uh, the car window and just breathe in deeply. The new book is called The Newcomer. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yep. It's still set in my fictitious village of Pendragon. And uh, the vicar that some readers might know about called Simon, he has gone to Brazil with his family to do some missionary work. Yeah. So the newcomer is the new vicar who's arriving just for the year that he's away. And she's a woman and it's her first parish. She has a very handsome husband and a troublesome teenage daughter. But she also has a raucous aunt who's a bit like Joanna Lumley. You wouldn't expect an aunt to be like that of a vicar. And um, there's a little bit of a mystery at the beginning of the book, a body is found. Okay. That's all I'm going to tell you. Do I miss presenting this morning? Um, no. <laughs> I did 10 years yeah. and 10 years was great. Yeah. And I could still be there, I guess. Yeah. But then I'd be the old bird that they'd be trying to prize out. You know, I think I went at the right moment in the party. So this time last year, we were just about opening Calendar Girls, the musical written by Barry Carlo, as we called him. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Barlow. Um, and it was an extraordinary nine months of touring on the road. Um, I loved going up and down the country, going to all these different theatres and, and towns, cities. Yeah. And I used to be a stage manager, that's what I'm trained to do. But to be on the other side and be in the spotlight was absolutely terrifying. But I did enjoy it and I learned a lot about myself. I don't know whether I'll be allowed to do it again, <laughs> but I made some good friends as well. If we're going to go anywhere, Phil adores Rick Stein, who doesn't? And uh, we're very lucky that Rick and Jill and Sarah have been very, very... Uh, can't think of the right word. They've, they've, they've championed us, you know, they've yeah. been lovely, lovely friends. Yeah. So um, Phil loves to go to Rick's seafood restaurant. Mm -hmm. That's his favorite restaurant on the planet. Yeah. And so every big family celebration, birthdays, wedding anniversaries, Christmas, etc., yeah. we always go to the seafood. And we go because it's so peaceful and the welcome is so great. Love pasties. Yeah. Um, I always, of course, have a chuffs pasty when yeah. we're in pasty, but also Malcolm Barnicots are pretty damn good. <laughs> Cornwall is very inspiring because of all its magic. There is magic in the air and all its grand stories and mysteries and tales. Um, but it's something about, and it sounds absolutely cheesy, but there's something... The, the movement of the wind in the hedges, the, the curl of the waves as the the horse tails fly off it, the, the sound of children on a beach when you're lying there with your eyes closed and you can just hear them, um, driving through the lanes and seeing owls and, I saw a red deer the other night. Um, I'm sure I saw the Beast of Bobman one night, but that's another story entirely. Um, and the people and their sense of humour and their quirkiness and everything is good by me.